And let as we read this word here too, this is this powerful. I believe we're better together than we are apart. This is a powerful word here. Here it is in Ephesians chapter 4. Therefore, I, the prisoner of the Lord, implore you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling with which you have been called. With all humility and gentleness and patience, showing um, together, uh, no, uh, showing love for one another, showing to one another love. I'm reading out of the uh, New, uh, the the NASB version. Uh, let me see what that said. Let me so one, so the devil won't get all mixed up here. Yeah, here's it. With all humility, gentleness, and patience, showing tolerance to one another. How? In love, being diligent to preserve. Listen, to this the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body. One spirit, just as also you were called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, and one baptism. One God and Father of all who is over all and through all and in all. Let's, let's stop right there. Uh, I want to talk a little bit uh, this afternoon for a few minutes. Uh, we are better together than we are apart. Matter of fact, you ought to tell somebody next to you, we're better together as believers than we are apart. We ought not make unity. We ought to preserve it. You didn't hear that. Some people try to make it and get all over themselves, but you ought to preserve unity. Why? Because there's only one Lord, one body, one spirit, one baptism, and one God who is over you all. I'm only talking to believers. And in you all. Mm. We ought to preserve the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Okay, you can be seated. Let me talk about this for a few minutes. And, uh, and, and we're going to go down from this place. I... I, I uh, uh, Ephesians is one of my. Uh, you, you have, I mean, let me a ask you for for your forgiveness to, to begin with. Uh, you know, uh, some some uh, weeks and weeks ago, I had that old flu and that bronchitis on top of it, and uh, I'm getting a little residual. But you need to know I'm healed already. And the doctor gave me some antibiotic to catch my body up with me. Some people don't understand what the word, I'm healed. All, I, I was healed before I got it. Amen. Yeah. By his stripes, I am healed. Yeah. Not going to be. And so the Lord used the doctor to prescribe some antibiotic to catch my body up with me. Yeah. Oh, you didn't get that all right there. Yeah. And the reason why I'm apologizing is because that antibiotic makes my mouth dry and a little pasty. But I'm going to preach anyhow. Yeah. Let's think about this. Ephesians is one of my, my favorite books, and I understand that pastor's really working in the book of Revelations that brings us, well, the church of Ephesus, that takes us back to the book of Revelation. Now, Revela now e Ephesians is one of my favorite books. I love the whole Bible, but uh, uh, in a word, you need to understand that Ephesians overall talks about our, our position up there yeah, ought to match our practice down here. Hey. We ought to be living down here like we're already up there. And, and, and what's so powerful about this book is that uh, the Holy Spirit working through the Apostle Paul works with this in a powerful way. And I don't think that many people get this uh, in the body of Christ, that I was chosen for, by him for himself before he said, let there be. Amen. Let's walk, 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 work, work with that a little bit. I was chosen by him, for himself, before he said, let there be. Amen. And the reason why I know that is because there was a lamb slain before the foundation of the earth. And he could choose me in the lamb, knowing what I would do before I did what I did and didn't make me do what I did when I did it. So I've been chosen before the foundation of the earth. 
And as a reminder of that, that's chapter 1. As a reminder of that, well, actually chapter 1 tells us, and because he chose me, he sealed me. Oh, bless God. And chapter 2 reminds me to remind myself that I didn't get here on my own. For by grace I've been saved, through faith, not of myself. It is God's gift to me. Chapter 2. And, it, and it's so powerful uh, because he said in chapter 3 tells me about the fact that, that, that I'm among those who are named uh, not only in heaven but also in earth. In other words, I got company here. Uh, we are part of the family of God. And because we are part of the family of God, we are better together than we are apart. Then in chapter 3, and as, as, as a part of your theme, and uh, let, let me, let me get my, say I got 20, 20 long distance, but uh, uh, I had to put these peoples on for some of this small print that I have to read. Uh, and sometimes, you know, it kind of gets over there. But I just like what I'm getting ready to say here because the Holy Spirit has me uh, on an assignment all this year. And I'm going to try to weave that in and please him. And at the same time, please pass the gains. Praise God. Here. Here, here, here's what it says uh, over there in chapter 3. Listen to this. Listen to this. It says uh, at, at verse 19. Let me see if I can get this. Now, I know you got, I know you're Bible preachers because he's a Bible man. Here's a, uh, chapter 3, verse 19. He says, he says uh, and to know the love of Christ which surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled, filled up to all the fullness of God. Verse 20. Now, to him who is what? Able. Able. Mm. To do far more abundantly beyond all that we ask or think, listen to this, according to the power that works in us. Listen to that. Uh, in other words, uh, 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 there is a power that's already at work in us. What power is that? It's the power of the Holy Spirit. Oh, yes. And, of course, you already know, and I know the pastor Gaines will tell you this, that the, the Holy Spirit is the executive of the Godhead. You see, the Father, he wills it, the Son speaks it, but the Holy Spirit works it. Oh, I know I'm in the right house. Yeah. See, see, it is God's will for you to know him intimately. And when you got saved, God put his, uh, his own DNA in your spirit. You have the power of God living inside you. The one who said, let there be, lives in you. And the Holy Spirit is working out what all God already willed and the, and the Son worked. You can walk out what he worked out without the power of the Holy Spirit. Mm. I want to try that again. I want to try that again. Because it, it amazes me that we don't understand the third person of the Godhead. And it says it right this here in this chapter. It is he, the third person in the Godhead, who's already at work in you. Somebody ought to say amen right there. I don't think that a lot of Christians let him do his work. Mm. Uh, as a matter of fact, I, I, me, and, me and the pastor were talking about that. And this power here is dunamis power. But you need to also know that you're qualified for exousia's power. And if you can get dunamis power connected with exousia's power, you're awesome. That means you got power over things around you. Mm. I'm sorry, but I believe that we in the evangelical church don't give the Holy Spirit his due. And we don't know that he only will glorify Jesus. And I'm going to say something you might not agree with, but the pastor can fix it when I'm gone. <laughs> if you like, he can fix it right now. But, but I want you to hear me. See, the Holy Spirit is the third person in the Godhead, and he is the executive. Which means that what he does is, is, is something that's supernaturally powerful. He works what the Father has already willed. Watch this. And when the Father willed it, Jesus speaks it. And if Jesus speaks it, the Holy Spirit has to perform it. But he wants to perform it in your life. Now, under him who is 
How is he able? He's able through the power of the Holy Spirit. And what he does is he always points you to Jesus and his humanity. Because if Jesus could do it in his human body, you can do it too. Because you got a power working inside you. Look at you all. That was it. The Holy Spirit does not glorify himself. He always points you to who? But listen to me. Most preachers don't tell you this. He does not point you to Jesus in his divinity. Well, how can I say that? Well, 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 well you remember, uh, I believe it was in John chapter 16. He said, and when he, he said it's important for you to, that I go because if I don't go, I can't send him. And when he comes, he's not going to say anything about himself. He's not going to glorify himself. He's going to always glorify me. Isn't that in John 16? It's in my Bible. I believe it's in yours. As a matter of fact, in Mark chapter 9, you remember the transfiguration? You remember, you know, uh, Moses and Elijah was up there and uh, Peter, James and John was up there and Peter got happy, said, it's good for us to be here. He said, let us build three tabernacles. And the moment he said that God, the father, blocked out the mountain, took the glory away from Jesus and said, hear my son. That means you hear him. Yeah, that's just two right there. Let me give you number three. Over there in the book of Hebrews chapter one, he said, in times past, you heard him through the prophet, but nowadays, hear my son. And when the Holy Spirit comes in your life, he always points you to Jesus. Why? In his humanity, because if Jesus did it in his humanity, you got power on board to do it in your humanity. Don't look at me like I have three heads. You're not doing it because you don't want to. Yeah. You're looking at other people and you decide you don't want to look like that. Uh, but if you really want to give the Holy Spirit his freedom in you, he's going to always point you to what Jesus has already done. Am I making any sense? He can fix it when I'm gone. Now, what, now look at what I said. This is your theme. I'm going to sit down in a few minutes. I'm not going to be long because my voice is trying to act up already. Listen to what I just said. And chapter 4 starts with this. Therefore, y'all missed that right there. Well, let, well let, let's try it again and watch the follow. Let's watch the follow. Here it is. Now, under him who is what? Able to do far more abundantly above all that you, we ask or what? Think according to the power that works within us. It's going on to say to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. And chapter 4 starts says, because of that, therefore. Amen. 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 Oh, oh, oh. I'm excited about but I don't see you getting this. He just read this. He said, and because this power is working in you and he's able to do all these things you're asking for. And he said, it's, it's working in the church. Watch this. And there's no generational gap. No. To every generation. And then chapter 4 opens up and says, therefore, because of this, walk worthy. Yeah. <sighs> I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, maybe I'm getting happy all by myself. But, but let's, let's examine a couple of these verses, and then I'm going to sit down if you don't mind. See, I believe that there are people right now who believe that this is only for them. No, I believe that the Holy Spirit of God wants to do something in this time in a powerful way. And some of us don't know how powerful he is in the life of believers. And I believe that he has me on this quest because we live so far beneath what God wants to be doing in every believer's life. And I think we're so busy looking at other people, criticizing other people, becoming so legalistic and so judgmental that we, we separate ourselves because we, 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 we think we're superior to this one or that one uh, because they do it a certain way and you don't do it that way. Now, your way might not necessarily be the only way. I think the Lord got a whole lot of other ways, but I think he gave us the Holy Spirit to do some things in your life. In every believer's life. Therefore, 
because of all of what I just said, therefore, do what? As a prisoner of the Lord, walk worthy of the vocation to which you've been called. Oh, yes. I, I, just, I, I just gave a quick uh, 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 rundown from chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3. And here we are in chapter 4. Right now in chapter 4, we're in the practical session. In other words, chapter 1, 2, and 3 was about our position. Now think of this. All that's about where we are, and nothing can stop our position. Amen. But chapter 4, 5, and 6 now, since you understand chapter 1, 2, and 3, walk it out yeah. practically. You got, you, got, you got everything you need on board. In the midst of a fallen world, living in a fallen body, you can walk this out in a practical way every day of your life. And you've got assistance. You got help. You got the advocate, you got the paracletos, you got the paraclete, you got the, the, the intercessor, you got the helper, you got the strengthener to help you walk this out practically in your everyday life. Hmm. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see if I can give this. Is, is that good so far? All right, yeah, we, we, we just worked on, on a position. Now let me see if I can work with a couple of things, and I'm going to talk about this for I want to talk about our vocation just for a second here. See, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord beseech you walk worthy of the, of, of the calling with which you are called. I really do like the King James Version, which reads it this way. I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called, our calling, beloveds, listen to this, the calling of God's children is a holy calling. Mm. I want to try that again. I, I want you to know that the calling of God, uh, of God's children, is a holy calling. And an humbling calling is also a heavenly calling. But we men and women have so denigrated the calling until we've gotten all so confused until some people think that the only time you get called is behind the pulpit. No. All of y'all been called. And listen, let me, I'm, I'm going to hurry up and finish because I know we, you, the, 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 your lunch is still holding you down. But everybody in here has got a holy calling. You've got a humbling calling. You've got a divine calling, not just simply to salvation, but you've got a calling to carry the message. Oh, well, I didn't get a whole lot of amens right there, but uh, let's walk. Here, everybody say with me, walk worthy. See, walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called. I like the word vocation, and this is the reason why I like a divine call to, to a divine call to God's service or to the Christian life. That's one part of it. A, a function or a station in life to which one is called. Mm. For me, vocation has a more permanent ring to it. In other words, uh, when you are called, you can't get away from it. Mm. You might try to shake it, but uh, we, we think that the anointing only moves in church. No, his presence ought to be where you work. He ought to be everywhere you. I'm going to try my best to not tabernacle anywhere. I'm just going to hurry up with this. Are you, hearing that? Are you hearing what I'm saying? See, it's a permanent calling. Uh, and not only is it a permanent calling, it, does, it has that permanent ring to it. Uh, our calling is not for a season. It's not for something we hear today, have today, and then it fades away and faints on tomorrow. No, the call of God on your life is forever. Hmm. Uh, and I want to know, uh, we ought to be engaged for life. When you... When are you going to start really carrying the message? Or are you going to leave it to Pastor Gaines? Mm. Plus, when are you going to start carrying the message? You're going to leave it to the preachers who stand before you. You have a divine calling. Yes. And it's better than a calling. It's a vocation. Which means that wherever you go, you are, wherever you are, you ought to make your ministry right there. I mean, if you're over at Social Security, around your desk, 
You ought to make that your ministry. And everybody who comes in your environment, you ought to make that your ministry. Why? Because you've got a divine call on your life. It is your vocation and it's there forever. I ain't getting a whole lot of amens here. Say it again. Walk worthy of the vocation to which you are called. You might not do this all the time, but I'm going to try this today. Look at your neighbor and say it's a permanent call. If you've been sure enough born again, it is a permanent call. And it don't have nothing to do with whether you're young or old, male or female. Carry the message everywhere you go. Praise God. Well, oh well, let me see. Let me see. See, our lives are a vacation for a vocation for Christ. Uh, we should be constantly asking what the apostolic action today will re reflect my vocation. Uh, we should be following the apostles' doctrine. Yes. Why? Because you see, if you read the book of Acts, you will actually, uh, it, it shouldn't end at the last chapter. It ought to be continuing in your life. Hmm. Eugene Peterson said it this way, and I'm going to hurry up. And he said, I want you to get it out, get out there and, and walk. Better yet, run on the road God called you to travel. I don't want any of you sitting around on your hands. I don't want anyone strolling off down some path that goes nowhere. You have a divine call on your life. And it's permanent. Let me, let me move on a little bit longer, and I'm going to come on in in a minute. Uh, again, our lives ought to be a vocation for Christ, and we should be constantly asking, what apostolic action should be happening in my life? Or do you believe that was just for Paul and Silas and Jim, James and John? Or, or is, is he the same yesterday, today, and forever for you? Hmm. Well, let me see. I thank you. I, I got a good sister right over here. We're going to work with this together, whoever that is over there. Uh, me, me, We're going to have a good time. Y'all can just join in if you want to. Yeah. Watch this. I beseech you. I beg of you. I admonish you. Walk worthy. Yes. Of the vocation to which you've been called. Let's use the word, let's say worthy. Try it once that. Say worthy. worthy. Let's walk that word out. Here's what that word means in the original text, and I know Pastor Gaines know this. That word, here's what it means this. It says equal weight. Say equal weight. Worthy. Equal weight. The reason why you ain't done nothing is because there's no equal weight. What does that mean? Uh, the weight of the call ought to match your vocation. <laughs> See, some people just want to do something. No, but when you call, uh, the, the, the weight ought to be equal to the vocation. That means you can't do it when you want to. No, you do it because you've been called and the weight is equal. I wish I had time to work with this, but... See, see, one's calling, his vocation, his conduct uh, should be in balance. Your conduct ought to match the call. And you have no excuse because he's working on the inside. He's working in you. Therefore, you got all the equipment you need so this conduct can match the call. The conduct ought to look like what you say. Let me try this for a minute, and I'm going to sit down here. Uh, that's number three, and I'm going to sit down. Uh, how many of you say that the, the Lord is the joy of my salvation? Let me see. Let me see your hand. Well, when y'all going to start looking like that? All I'm saying is there ought to be equal weight. Your conduct, and no, I don't know about anybody else, but you see, even when I don't feel like it, I'm going to put a smile on my face. Matter of fact, when I'm going through, I got for you, for I got Jesus for this. I'm not going to let the devil steal my joy. Nor am I going to allow him to lessen my vocation. I heard him when he called me. And there ought to be an equal balance in my life and conduct. I won't say what up here and then you live something else out there. Somebody else said there ought to be equal balance. Your yes ought to be yes. 
Your no ought to be no, and that ought to be it. Equal balance. Oh, that's good right there, isn't it? I don't know about anybody else, but uh, it's a job making your conduct match your calling. <laughs> and we're living in a moment now when people say what they want to say behind this desk and live any kind of way when they get from behind this desk. But everybody ought to say worthy. There ought to be equal balance. The same weight of the call ought to be in your daily life. Is that a good word? Oh, my. Now, let me, let me finish this, and, and we're going to sit down in a minute here. See, you, you, when, when, when the Lord really calls your life, and he really steps into your life, and he puts his DNA in your spirit, your attitude about life ought to change. I mean, things that used to be important to you ought to now not be important, and your passion for Jesus ought to be growing. You ought to be glad to say a word for him anytime. Because when God puts his DNA in your spirit, something ought to happen. Because you're not in there by yourself any longer. Excuse me, I'm, 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 I don't know whether you got that. You ought to tell your neighbor, you're not in there by yourself. Jesus said, so it's important for you for me to go. Because if I don't go, I can't send the helper with you. You got the helper living inside you right now. And he's able. <laughs> to do exceeding abundantly above all you can ask or even. Because he's walking where? Inside you. I'm going to get to the we better together than we are apart. Yes. Here it is, and I'm, 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 I'm coming on down. Let me give you a couple of signs. Number one, here, here it is. See, our attitudes ought to, ought to be so changed. Uh, the attitudes are, 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 are important as a believer. Number one, write this down. The first sign is humility. Yeah. And I'm going to keep on going down because you know that's the opposite of pride. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The sign of humility is one of those things that I think that the Apostle Paul lists in this whole piece of unity. The one thing that will cause our unity to leave is pride. Yeah. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. And when the time is right, he'll exalt you. Uh, number two, number two, here we go. Uh, there should be a sign of gentleness and meekness. The reason why many of us get off because with other believers is because we don't know what it means to be gentle. Gentleness is power under control. I would slap you, but because he's living in me, I would take my fist and hit you upside your nappy head, but because he's at work, y'all not listening to me. Yeah, see, are you hearing me? See, you see, you got to be humble. Let me tell you, you ought to tell somebody next to you, the Lord only uses broken vessels. Yeah, when you think you're all together, you got it all together, he can't use you. But when you've been broken, you put all of your confidence, all your trust, all of your dependence on him, and you don't mind saying I'm sorry or I apologize when you need to. Mm. Then we ought to exhibit some patience with one another. I don't know whether you like this, but you ought to look at somebody and tell them, you ain't all that all the time. You make mistakes just like the rest of us. All we like sheep have gone astray. And because I stump my toe rather than talk about me, you need to be patient with me. Why? Because the Lord was patient with you. And because he was patient with you, you ought to forgive me the same way he's forgiven you. And what you ought to do is be an imitator of God. Patience. I'm, all, I'm almost done. Almost done. See, and, and you ought to tell somebody and in your 50th year, you need to bear with one another. In love. Because we're better together than we are apart. Yes. 
See, bearing with one another in love and, and making every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. Uh, we are a community of love. And it's the presence of God, the power of God that holds us together. I keep going back to chapter 3, your, your theme. And then it opens up in chapter 4. Therefore, because of all this in chapter 3, therefore, and I beg of you, and I beseech you as his prisoner too, walk worthy. You know what walk means? That means your daily, everyday life ought to be in balance with your conduct and with your call. That is so good, isn't it? All right, now I'm done. You can stand on your feet then. Y'all to stand on your feet. As a community of love, beloveds, you need to look at the person back next to you and say, we are better together than we are apart. And because we're better together than we are apart, we are commanded to keep the bond of the Spirit among us. And because we're going to do that, there's power in unity. Isn't it? Now, I'm going to get ready to finish now. And you tell you, say, say, say this. Say, there's power in unity. Say, that's not a man idea. That's not a church idea. That's God's idea. Why? Because there's one Lord. Come on now. Come on. One Lord. One faith. One baptism. One spirit. Therefore, what worthy of the vocation to which you've been called. I dare you to give the Lord a praise that's worthy of his name. Because he's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you ask. Or even think because of the power that's already at work inside you. Don't no, sit down there. You ought to tell your neighbor he's working when you sleep at night. Because when you went to sleep, you went to your, you don't even know where you went. But he's so powerful, you came back to the right body. He's with you no matter where you are. And he's already at work. The Holy Spirit is already at work. And because he's already at work, I beseech you to walk worthy of that vocation. The one thing you ought to do is release the Holy Spirit to work in your life. Don't be ashamed of him. And he doesn't just only work when the organ and the drum is bumming. No. Uh, you, ought to, you ought to open your mouth and say every once in a while, he's dropping an anointed clue in my life. I need to be able to see that and bless him because of it. Isn't the Lord wonderful? He, he's not waiting for you to come to church. No, he wants the anointing to flow in your life every day of your life. And if you have a listening heart and a renewed mind, you can see what the Holy Spirit is doing. And you're like, what you're going through right, right now? Whatever you're going through, you know what? You are equal to it. I'm going to try it one more time. Whatever you're going through right now, you're already equal to it. Why? You got Jehovah, who's also Jesus, who's also the Holy Spirit, living inside you to cause you to get through whatever it is you're going through. And if there's anybody near you who's going through them, you've been through so you can help them through. You want to open your mouth and say, we are better together than we are apart. There's power in unity. Unity, say so. Say, say unity. I'm in Psalm 133 now. Unity commands the blessing. Where there's unity, blessing has got to happen according to the word of God. Maintain and keep the unity of the spirit 
in the bond of peace because we are better together than we are apart. Remember that word worthy. Remember that word vocation. Remember this because the Lord wants you to have a listening heart and a renewed mind. Because if the Father willed it, don't you know the Father wants you to have it more than you want to have it? Amen. Jesus purchased it yeah. and then spoke it. Yeah. The Holy Spirit works it. Yeah. But you've got to be available and release him to work it. Because he's not going to say anything about himself. He's going to always point you, watch this, to the finished work of Jesus. Don't you know what? you got everything you need for life and godliness. Do you not know there's not a devil in hell can stop you from being who you are in Christ Jesus? <laughs> Let me see the hands of all the saved folks. Yeah. Look around and see if there's anybody whose hands not up. This is a good time to witness to them. And I want you to understand, we're better together than we are apart. We ought to be humble with one another, patient with one another. And we need to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. What I, what I, what, now, now this is me. You look around yourself, you see anybody whose hand's not up. This is an opportunity for you to just witness to them. And say, I'm not trying to uh, force you to join manna or any church. I want you to join Jesus. Amen. Oh, a lot of people join churches and never join Jesus. You'd be surprised at the number of people who joined churches for years and miss Jesus. Hmm. And then you ought to be in a place where the word of God is faithfully taught and preached so that your life can grow and develop. We are so much better together than we are apart. Another thing I want you to do, Mount Pleasant and Manor, is to release the Holy Spirit to operate in your life. The reason why we are so weak and powerless is because we're afraid that he's going to ask us to do something that we've been criticizing other people for doing or thought they were doing. Let me tell you, i got to say this. You need to know it. Uh, the Holy Spirit is not Baptist. He's not Church of God in Christ. He's not Pentecostal holiness. He's not Methodist or Episcopalian you know, or Presbyterian. He's God. Recognize he is. And let him loose in your life. Matter of fact, some of you have been trying to move a little bit and you've been grieving him and quenching him because you don't want nobody to think you're crazy. We don't have to worry about it. They think it anyway, so you might as well give them something to think about. Really allow. Look, listen, listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. I'm, I'm going to let you sit down. It is impossible for you or for me to walk out what Jesus has worked out without the power of the Holy Spirit. Stop grieving him. Stop quenching him. And allow him to be free in your life because what he's going to do is always point you to Jesus and he'll point you to Jesus in his humanity. And if Jesus could do it in his humanity, that means that he's going to give you the equipment to do it in your humanity. So stop grieving him. By the way, you do know that Jesus was filled with the Spirit on the day of his baptism. That's why you need to be filled with the Spirit. And let me tell you this, the Holy Spirit will turn you to Jesus. There's not one place in the Scripture where Jesus ever, watch what I said, grieved the command of his Father. He said, the reason I came here is to please him. It don't matter what I look like, I'm here to please him. It doesn't matter what their opinion is, I'm here to please him. It doesn't matter what it feels like to me, I'm here to please him. You can't find one scripture where Jesus ever even began to grieve pleasing his father. And the Holy Spirit will always point you to the humanity of Jesus. See, ain't no whole lot of shouting in here. You know why? Because you don't want to do that. You, 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 you think that it was for then. How in the world, how in heaven's name is a dark world going to see how good Jesus is? If the Holy Spirit don't show him up in your life. 
how's that going to happen? I mean, I, believe, I, pass, I believe that's what Jesus said in John chapter 13. He said, by this shall all men know that you are my dear. Not by how you go to church. You ought to go. But the way the love of God is shed abroad in your heart for other people, then the world will say, my, I don't know what they got, but I want it. I can't put my finger on it, and it's more than that cross hanging around their neck. It's just the way they frame their words. It's the way they live their life. It's just the way the power of God moves in them. I tell you, it is so wonderful to let the Holy Spirit loose to show you the humanity of Jesus and walk in it. You can't walk out what he worked out without the power of the Holy Spirit. Did you get that? Yes. Did you understand that? Yes. Let me see. How, I, mean, let me, I, mean, I mean, you understood that. Let me see that. I mean, you really, you really did. All right. Well, suppose the Lord tell you to go and give him a praise that's beyond your, your comfort zone. How about that? It's not hyper-emotionalism. Just, I mean... Uh, he he wants you to bless him because he brought he kept you all together for 50 years that's worthy of a hallelujah praise pastor Gaines I'm done I'm not finished I'm just quitting God is good look at your neighbor saying we're better together than we are apart we're going to maintain the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace because there's only one spirit we are better together than we are apart alright Pastor Gaines right. you can be seated in the presence of the Lord